The capital asset pricing model, CAPM, has been used for many decades as one of the best tools for analyzing the risk return trade off for investment. The CAPM is considered as one of the main contributions of academic research to finance managers. According to CAPM, the only way an investor can get a higher return for his investment is by taking a higher risk. But how valid is CAPM? What does the real-world empirical evidence say about the validity of CAPM? In this video, we are going to look into how CAPM is tested in a study by Black, Jensen and Scholes in 1972. This journal is widely cited. It is a good exposure for students to learn how research is conducted too. Let's learn together! Black, Jensen and Scholes 1972 conducted a study on the New York Stock Exchange stock returns. The objective of the study is to present some additional tests on the capital asset pricing model, as well as to provide additional insights into the nature of the structure of security returns. The sample period span from 1934 to 1965. They used monthly data and performed a first pass and second pass regression. This slide shows the result of the BJS first pass regression. There are 10 portfolios in the sample. The beta, average access return, and alpha have been generated based on the equation given in the slide. This is a time series regression. The hypothesis for the time series test is that the intercept alpha should be equal to zero. If alpha is equal to zero, this will confirm the positive relation between beta and returns based on CAPM. If alpha is different from zero, the CAPM cannot hold. The BJS findings show that only three out of the 10 alpha coefficients have T values greater than 1.85. That is portfolio number two, portfolio number nine, and portfolio number 10. This slide shows the result of the BJS second pass regression for the full sample period from 1931 to 1965. Both the gamma zero and gamma one are found to be significantly different from zero. The figure shows that systematic risk can explain the average assessed monthly return. The security market line is an upsloping line. This means the higher the beta, the higher the assessed return. In the subperiod from April 1957 to December 1965, the gamma one is found to be negative. Black, Jensen, and Scholes describe gamma 1 as having the wrong sign. The higher the beta, the lower the excess return. In this case, CAPM is not valid. The first step in testing the CAPM will be to estimate the beta values of all stocks involved in the study during the sample period. I refers to stocks in the sample and T refers to time. The first pass regression is a time series test. We use the following equations. Return of stock minus risk-free rate equal A plus B, market return minus risk-free rate plus error term. Or equivalently, we can use excess return. The capital R represents excess return. Excess return is A plus B, market excess return plus error term. This above equation is also known as the security characteristic line. Its slope is interpreted as an estimate of beta. This data is available in Blackboard. You may download the file. In the sample data, there are 60 monthly data and 30 stocks. Take note that the data represents excess return. The average excess return, beta, alpha and r square for each stock have been calculated. The next step is to perform a second pass regression, which is a cross-sectional test. We use the following equation. 
ba a i equal gamma zero plus gamma one beta i plus theta i. I refers to the stock from the first stock until the end stock. Bar R is the mean access return of a security. Gamma 0 refers to the interceptum. Gamma 1 is the risk premium. Beta is the estimated betas from the time series analysis. And theta refers to the disturbance terms. This equation is taken to represent the security market line and its slope is an estimate of the market risk premium. We are going to test if CAPM is valid or not. CAPM is valid if gamma zero is equal to average risk free rate and gamma one is equal to average market return minus average risk free rate. From the Excel spreadsheet, you can see that the average monthly access return of each stock is regressed on its beta. We can use Excel function to calculate the intercept, beta or the slope, and R square. This result is generated using data analysis regression. The X variable is the beta and the Y variable is the average access return. The objective is to check on the T statistic of gamma 0 and gamma 1. The result shows that gamma 0 and gamma 1 is not significantly different from 0. A hypothesis test is conducted to verify if gamma 1 is equal to the market risk premium. The actual market risk premium is negative 0.00219 and the regress risk premium is negative 0.001972. The test statistic is calculated using the formula, and the answer is 0.093. The critical value based on 95% confidence level is 1.645. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis. The conclusion is gamma 1 is equal to the average market risk premium. The second pass regression can be depicted graphically as shown in the slide. The x-axis is the beta of each stock and the y-axis is the average access return of each stock. There are 30 stocks in total, therefore there are 30 points. The results show that the beta cannot explain the average access return. The R square is low. Finally, we have come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching this video. Please practice the examples given in the Excel spreadsheet as practice makes perfect. I hope to see you again. Bye!